Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here, and there's nothing I love more than The Sims, and also discussing and giving my opinions slash judging The Sims. So today, of course, we are gonna bridge that gap between the two. I have recently been playing an awful lot of my Nightmare Legacy Challenge. Obviously, it's a 10 generation family on short lifespan where you have to complete two full aspirations. Now, they're not the strongest thing in The Sims 4. I always give my very critical feedback of a lot of them feel like walkthroughs of new packs, how to actually get the most out of it, but it makes it very, very easy. So I thought today, why not judge in a tier list ranking system every single aspiration that we have so far in The Sims 4? And I'm gonna judge them harshly. We are gonna start off with a friend of the animals, the only one that is actually included in animals. The reward trait is obviously gonna have a heavy influence on how I feel. Easier to train and discipline animals as well as gain relationship with them faster. Meh. Train out four misbehaviors. Oh geez Louise, I just chose this in my short lifespan legacy challenge and you know what? That is gonna be a nightmare living up to its name. That sounds like actual hell actually. So this one is personally going in Grim Reaper. Being friends with an animal doesn't really give you anything special from what I can remember. Maybe I'm just hating on this because I am a cats and dogs hater. Sue me. Best selling author. Probably what I would have aspired to be as I was a child when I wrote one tiny little book in school and my grandparents hyped me up so much. Can capture life itself in a book and wield it to bring back someone they've lost. I'm absolutely sorry, but the book of life rocks. If you haven't ever watched my 13 souls challenge, it's basically death note, but in the Sims 4, you absolutely should check out that challenge. It's one of my favorites. Earn 25,000 royalties in publishing books. Now, I wouldn't say this is the hardest thing to do, but this actually, actually feels like a life aspiration. Now I know The Sims 4 is a little bit different when it comes to that because it's not like a lifetime thing. You can switch aspirations anytime you want in The Sims 4, which I love. I love being able to hop between. I love not just being like locked into one and having to spend your whole life dedicated towards it. But this actually feels like it is up there as like an achievement that Sims wanna actually get. And this is actually going to go in motherload. Break into a home, find a tiger inspector badge. To be fair, I haven't actually done that one yet. I don't actually even know how. More successful when rummaging and sorting through junk mail, which means that you get like coupons more frequently. Don't actually know if junk mail does anything more than give you coupons. They have perfect alibi when caught breaking into someone's home. Well, I will say that's been broken for me the entire time. Feels harsh to judge this one so critically when I haven't even found the tiger inspector badge, but it's going in tragic clown. I just don't think it's interesting. I don't think secrets are interesting, which in turn makes obviously this aspiration not very interesting. Villainous Valentine. Now this came in an update. I honestly can't remember what even update this came with, but I actually haven't played the aspirations that came with that patch all that much. So I really don't know that much about Villainous Valentine. Get caught cheating, achieve X status with the Sims and break up couples. Oh! get caught cheating 10 times, achieve X status five times over and break up couples 10 times. I do love causing a little bit of trouble. I like when things aren't all like happy valley within my game. You are going into Rosebud. Criminal career, witness the death of a sim. Okay, you know what? You weren't super interesting until I saw that. But definitely not the most interesting, especially when it's like a deviance one. I don't know. I just feel like it should stir up more trouble than that. Again, this kind of suffers from The Sims 4 having not really a lot of consequence. I'm still here thinking about The Sims 2. Uh, bring back the furious state. So you are average. Clog drains, perform voodoo. Uh, no. Boring. Snooze fair. It's the drama, Mick. I love it. This one is also, honestly, maybe even worse. Matriarchs provide skill boosts whenever they are around children. 
and that's kind of meh. I feel like kid skills go up pretty quickly anyway. I mean, this one does feel like a lifetime, probably because it is gonna take a lifetime considering you need at least four grandchildren. So uh, for that reason, I do feel like it is a fair bit of work. I feel like it lines up with the title, like you are friends with your grandchildren, so therefore it is a big happy family. I personally would like to see things not be going so well, so therefore it's going in average. Become a vampire. Wow, thank you game. So this is when you actually turn, so it's kind of like a vampiric family, technically by blood, considering you are sucking their blood and turning them into vampires. It's like, ooh, I want to control you and I want to be your master, but I also want to be kind of good towards you. Again, I would kind of prefer it if it was like be good friends with or actually enemies with five of your offspring because I can imagine there is tensions between a vampire master and their prey basically. Not the worst, I like that it's involving those people that you actually turn as family, so therefore Rosebud. Super parent that came with parenthood provide bonus character values gain when they're toddlers, children and teens. That's actually quite helpful considering I struggle really really hard with character values. Go into full parent mode. Now that's something I haven't done in a very very long time. Have a child with three positive character values. Now this one's definitely going to take a lot of micro Managing. Does that actually bring it down in my eyes though? Because I don't like micromanagement all the time within my game. I think this one honestly is quite interesting. Max any skill, mentor your child three times, complete an aspiration, have a child or grandchild reach the top of the career. By being vicarious, your children's skill gains can contribute to your own. Successful lineage sims really said, you are part of my life force, you better live up to the standards that I set for you. That's what I like about this, like it feels a little bit evil in the sense that you want to push them to like succeed the most that they can. Honestly going up into mother load. Basically all they get for doing all of this is that they can create potions that change emotions. Create five types of excellent drink. Boring. If you're gonna get to 10 mixology skill, you're gonna create five types of excellent drinks so easy. Bland, not interesting. I mean, nice for them to include mixologists, but honestly, I feel like you could live without it. I think that you should be able to like craft drinks that can like unalive sims. I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking too dark, but no thank you. For Horse Wrench, we obviously had Expert Nectar Maker. Now do not be fooled. Yes, it's only a one level one. 50 excellent bottles of nectar. See, now this isn't like master mixologist. Like, how are you gonna have this as a level four, create five types of excellent drinks, and then in this one be like, actually make 50. <laughs> I love it. Make a thousand selling nectar is honestly pretty easy, especially if you have like selling tables or you let them age really, really well and they're like excellent quality. You will actually earn 100K very, very simply. I had a lot of fun with it, even though I didn't really enjoy Horse Ranch all that much. I do wish that there was a nectar making like career and that they had just added to it a little bit more. But this one is actually going in Rosebud. I don't think it's perfect. I probably would have liked to see it be like a multiple step thing, like make different types of nectar. Another Horse Ranch one for all you horse girls out there. Achieve level 10 in horse riding skill, 15 horse competitions, gold in five master horse competitions, and place at the ultimate horse championship. This one again, when I was playing through it, it was pretty difficult. Getting gold in stuff was actually pretty wild. Definitely hindered by horse ranch because obviously you just send them into a rabbit hole. It just means that you have to like train repeatedly, which I know is like the gameplay loop of horse riding. Honestly, very, very easy. Cook two pizzas or waffles, a single gold event after reaching silver. This is very simple. It's basically just about using the appliances, which makes sense, but it's kind of boring in my opinion. Without thinking, it's going into Grim Reaper. Base game, BB, we got Master Chef. Buttery biscuit base, base, base. Silver at dinner party. Level four of culinary career. Excellent food. 
episodes not as interesting as I once remembered. I do like the tie-in of events and kind of being an at-home chef as well as being in the culinary career. So I'm sorry, but you are going in crumple bottom. What are you? Oh, you are the five-star property owner. Come through for rent. This is the landlord aspiration. Five-star rating, which depending on how you play, some people find it very, very easy to get. Some people find it very, very difficult. I don't know if for rent is still broken. This one I think is helped by the gameplay. I actually like the emergency events. I like the maintenance events. I actually think being a landlord and the fact that it pushes you to be like a good landlord and a friendly landlord is pretty nice. Um, but it's definitely not the most interesting. It's also not the most difficult. So it's going in average. Back to home chef hustle. Damn, I'm getting a headache. We are going here, there and everywhere. I tried to put these in order and then tier maker were like, no. How dare you think that this was gonna be an easy process for your pea brain to follow. I wish that that weren't just tied to pizza and waffles. I know obviously this came with home chef hustle. So it makes sense that it's like trying to push you into the direction of those dishes. But why couldn't it just be like five excellent dishes or just like five excellent products? Poor quality item for 100. See, that's interesting. I like when they throw in different things that you don't ever really think are gonna be part of an aspiration. Resurrect a ghost by selling ambrosia. So difficult to get ambrosia. So props to them for that. Earn 10,000 by completing food sales and sell one meal for 300. And then also from this, I'm fairly sure you unlock that like 500% markup without even thinking about it, without any hesitation, mother load. You are the blueprint. All of you others should be looking at her. Mother is mothering. Market is marketing. Fabulously wealthy. I want fabulous. Honestly, probably one of the easiest aspirations to actually do in The Sims 4. Uh -huh. Actually, no, I lied. Have earned 200,000 is actually pretty difficult because that comes from like careers and then also selling things. I think unless you have like a hobby, kind of like nectar making that makes making money very, very easy easy. That's definitely not the easiest thing that you could ever do. Even though it is just about making money, it's going into uh, Rosewood. How appropriate. Unfortunately, not in Motherload though, aka the better money cheat, but not the peak money cheat. That would be money, surprisingly. Never ever play with Mansion Baron, probably because I don't like building and therefore my houses just like start to look a mess if I even try to do that. And that's because you need to own 15 pieces of art, 5,000 worth of landscaping, own 30 windows and 20 columns. You can just download these from the gallery so it can be quite easy but you still need to like have a home worth those things and you need to be able to afford it. So that's kind of where the gameplay comes from this. I actually like that this is a little aspiration for the builders out there which I think doesn't happen very often. She's cute, she's quirky, she's also going honestly maybe a mother load. I just think it's interesting even even though I don't really play with it, I think it's a good concept. Academic, obviously introduced in Discover University, so no surprise, it very much heavily features around uni. Earn a degree, contribute knowledge, share a job using a degree. Also don't take these for like face value. When you actually get to these and it's like down here in the little aspiration panel, I think the tutor students, you have to do it like three or five times. It's not just like do it once and then you're done. I do kind of wish that this one was like earn multiple degrees because obviously uh, that could be very very difficult. I also kind of wish that we had like masters and like further further education but I do uh, think this one is quite interesting. I actually think even though it's kind of those walkthrough aspirations it does actually have like quite interesting goals like tutoring students which you honestly might not do if you're just like playing Discover University without having this aspiration. So therefore Rosebud for you. Now I know I don't particularly like emotions but I do quite like it when you have to like maintain something because I find that difficult to do in <laughs> The Sims 4. Own 3,000 worth of electronics. Pretty easy but honestly kind of cool that they added that. I have spent a hundred hours on the, the computer. Now I don't know if it's because I relate to these sims or if I actually just find this a very interesting aspiration because of the mix of things that you actually have to do. This is going into motherload. Honestly I'm kind of shocked 
fact that like upgrading a computer system isn't actually in there. If you have a nerd sim and you've never really had them focus on upgrading computers, definitely have them do that. You could even make it, I guess, into a business where you then like upgrade them and sell them at like a higher cost. I don't know how you would go about that, but I do think it's cool. I definitely can't relate to this one. Also, Erudite just reminds me of Divergent. Also, the fact that I did not know how to pronounce this word for the longest time once I actually started reading Divergent. Craft an object on the woodworking table. I don't know why like woodworking table is like part of nerd brain. I don't know why that goes hand in hand apparently to the sims team repair or upgrade an object this one it feels like disjointed i do like that they can instantly fix and upgrade any object that is extremely op but i also quite like the mix like it has range it has depth. It's keeping me on my toes and Sims 4 aspirations don't really do that very often. Mm, honestly, also maybe Rosewood. Whatever the hell this is, I know it has to do with the realm of magic and sorcery. Much less charge when casting spells. That's practically a reward that you can like pick up as a sorcerer anyway. That's a really, really bad reward trait. Reach a rank five and no 10 different spells boring. You're gonna do that if you're playing with Realm of Magic, bro. No effort was put into it. Honestly, tragic clown. Realm of Magic, you will never be famous. But vampires? Vampires, you are the golden child. Actually, you've been slightly demoted since werewolves came out, but I still love you, vampires. There are elements of vampires that I much prefer over werewolves, and the aspirations actually heavily drive my love for vampires, because it introduces like different ways to play vampires. It's yeah, kind of a walkthrough, but it gives you ideas on like how to make them different from one another. And they actually have all like varying different personalities. And I bloody love that. It's my favorite thing about vampires. So thank you to the vampire aspirations. I think they're all gonna be in Motherload or Rosebud, honestly. Leave your predictions down in the comments right now. All about learning about vampires, basically. Read the encyclopedia, do research. If Jesse were an aspiration, they would be this one right here. Read the ultimate vampire tome, become Grandmaster Vampire, survive for an additional 20 days as a vampire. This one's not as interesting as I thought it was. I'm fairly sure this like drove my like evil vampire in my let's play, which is probably why I'm remembering it with rose colored glasses of nostalgia. Well, I think my prediction may have already gone out the window already because this one is honestly me maybe a Grim Reaper. Although reading the encyclopedia, you'll go in Crumple Bottom just cause you can find some interesting facts, I guess. The Beyonce of Sims 4 aspirations, a Renaissance Sim. Can write helpful manuals about any skill they're well versed in. I don't think I have ever done that my whole entire time of playing The Sims 4. Level five in five skills, level three in two careers. Picasso, I like it. It's different, it's getting your Sims to try out a bunch of different things. Yes, it is mainly about like learning skills and also uh, going into jobs, but that's actually uh, pretty difficult to reach like level eight and five skills or whatever the heck it says. I love that. Mother load, perfection. The knowledge aspirations are really running away with this. Oh no, snowy escape. I pretend I never see her. If I saw that pack walking down the street, I wouldn't know a thing. Apart from sexy Yamachan. Have natural resistance to inclemental weather. So I'm fairly sure that means they can't pass away from being too hot or too cold. Survive three wildlife attacks, achieve level eight in skiing. This is definitely brought down for me by the fact that it like fully focuses on Snowy Escape and I just don't think it's all uh, that interesting of a pack. I mean, it's pretty much a locational one where it's like, hey, go out there and experience these things in this new world that we introduce, which are personally one of my worst versions of an aspiration. I don't think you're in Tragic Clown because like at least you have a little bit of variety to you. I'm gonna put you in Grim Reaper. Museum 
museum patrons like museums. Does that literally just mean that they like get happy if they're in a museum? Museum are also one of the most boring lot types that we have in the game. This is basically all about the archaeology skill, authenticate three artifacts, level four of archaeology, write a good archaeology skill book. I like that, that when you get to level four and you reach level 10, you have to write a skill book. Those are what make this interesting, but honestly, it's just all about the archaeology skill. There's nothing else to it. Because whilst you're playing with archaeology skill, you're gonna do all those other things that it wants you to do. So uh, therefore, you're going in crumple bottom. You were saved by your last level. Oh, these location ones. <laughs> these hit different and not in a good way. This is the Fount of Tomorani knowledge. Obviously came with for rent. Use an introduction. Use a squat toilet. Meet a sim with the child of the village personality Trait. They're better at cooking Tomorani cuisine, finding tassels, getting along with Sims with Child of the Village trait, and will be more successful when exploring the Tiger Sanctuary. I mean, the reward trait is quite nice. The aspiration itself is just so simple. I honestly don't think that's the worst, so it's going in Grim Reaper. Ooh, the ones that came with the one gameplay kit that we had. I'm fairly sure we got two aspirations in Bust the Dust. Earn the Moodlet Perfectionist Zeal plus four. I've literally never had that, but then I do turn off bust the dust at any given opportunity. Destroy three bustonies or filth fiends with vacuum cleaner. What is a filth fiend? I don't think I've ever seen them. Destroy five messy or dust pile objects with vacuum cleaner. Perform two upgrades on vacuum cleaner. Hire a housekeeper. It's in location, but it's up there with one of the most interesting aspirations that we have. You were judged incorrectly. Oh, uh, city living, my love. I mean, I absolutely adore city living. I make it no secret that this is absolutely one of the favorite children of mine of The Sims 4. Light fireworks at the Humor and Hijinks Festival. Order three times from food stalls. I could do that without even living in San Marjuno. The only like tough thing here is live in an apartment worth 100,000 simoleons. City living, I love you, you will always be famous for me, but you are joining your location siblings <laughs> over here. Oh, beach life. I feel like I don't even need to check this one out. I will, just to remind myself, I did this one recently. It's honestly probably in Tragic Clown. All you get is a sim who never becomes tense, which I mean, tense does happen a lot, but that's just eradicating one big portion of the game, in my opinion. Get a suntan, eat a coconut, me, this summer. I actually don't particularly like coconut coconut, so probably not me. Doze off whilst relaxing in a lounge chair or float lounger. That is number four. That is ridiculous. That's the last stage of this aspiration. You absolutely stay in Tragic Clown. Strangerville, now honestly, probably carried by the story, let's be real. You also receive fan mail, which I just think is like such a quirky little thing. It's never anything interesting, but I do love how you have little little fangirls being like, oh my god, you saved our town, we love you. If you're wanting to do uh, this Strangerville story, honestly, just use this as like little hints to get through it, but like at least she's a little bit tough. She's giving something. I don't think in good conscience I can put her above a crumple bottom, but she's better than her siblings. Mount Komarebi sightseer. Go sledding three times. I hate the word sledding, why did I say that? It's sledging. Take it slow and become emotionally mindful. Now this one, if you're not actually attempting to do this, can be slightly difficult just because I feel like getting your sims to feel fine is really difficult in this game because they flip flop so much. But if you actively like work on it, it's very easy. I'm sorry, but you are also in going into Grim Reaper. You're not quite as bad as beach life. Maybe I should actually do a video where I try and complete the bust the dust aspirations. It would be really fun if I like did it with with Bob and Eliza, because obviously they have like separate bedrooms. So like Eliza keeps her space like really clean and tidy. And then Bob like lets his get all dirty and dusty. Oh, I'm kind of here for it. So we have Fabulously Filthy. I may like this one just because it kind of reminds me of Salim Benali from City Living. And I love Salim so much. Let things get dirty. Max out the fun motive whilst on a dusty, dirty or filthy floor. See, these are fun. I uh, hate on Bust the Dust. I actually really like the aspirations. Be 
befriended Dust Bunny, successfully asked three Sims to clean, so I'm not gonna do any cleaning, but I will make everyone else do it for me. Invite a guest over whilst it's dirty, woohoo in a filthy house. These have appeal. Get up there with your neat friend. I know it's base game only, but I really do have a soft spot for serial romantic. I just think it's a super fun thing. Honestly, this may be in Rosebud or Motherload for me. Have three first kisses. It's all about getting up your charisma skill. Have strong romantic relationship with three sims at once. Kiss 10 sims and gold on three dates. Have eight boyfriends or girlfriends. If you're putting your whole plumbussy into romancing people, it can be easily done, but she's perfect. I love her. This video is just making me realize that I love the aspirations that have strong storylines and like you can really weave drama into them. Soulmates, not so much. Earn silver on two dates with your spouse, achieve soulmate relationship, which is so simple. Perform 50 romantic gestures, earn gold on three dates with spouse. I mean, if you're in a happy marriage, then you're probably gonna reach this quite easily. Bland, vanilla, no spice. Crumple Bottom. No, Crumple Bottom does have a little bit of spice. Agnes, hello? You can't tell me that Agnes Crumple Bottom is vanilla. Not with the way she flings that purse around. Bodybuilder, AKA walking ick. Unless it is Kayla Fleming from Get Famous. Own two pieces of workout equipment. Honestly, wish we still had better workout equipment in the game. Reach Sims maximum body potential. If you're working out and getting to level 10, that's probably pretty easy. I do, however, think it is pulled up by the fact that they live longer lives. I honestly would probably put you in Grim Reaper. You're going into Crumple Bottom, maybe like halfway in between here and Rosebud, only for the live longer. Maybe I will put you in Rosebud. You are being carried, not by those strong biceps, but by your reward trait. Put a gemstone valued at 2,500. Feel like that's quite easy. Summon the Grim Reaper. That's also easy. I feel like the Magnificent Crystal Tree should actually be on the fourth level. That's absolutely the most difficult one. Like I reckon you're gonna be stuck on three for the longest. I think throwing Grimm in there definitely helps this one, but it is pretty like basic. Like you don't actually need to earn like certain money off like selling your jewelry, which I kind of wish was part of this. So average. Unpopular opinion, but I love eco lifestyle and no one can change my mind about that. I wanna do a video on why my favorite packs are my favorite packs. I feel like I can win people around to eco lifestyle. Not gonna lie though, can't really remember this one. Have five community influence points, vote on uh, naps. It's pretty much about the career. Not everyone wants to reach level 10 in their career. Why do the Sims always pressure us to do that? Very simple, uh, extremely boring. I don't think it's deserved to go into Tragic Clown, so it's gonna go into uh, Grim Reaper. Six great catches, collect 20 types of fish. Okay, it's not the most interesting thing to watch in the game, but I do uh, like that it feels like a mystery box. It feels like nature's mystery box. Mm, I'm gonna say average. Curator, one of my personal favorites. Probably not the most interesting to a lot of people, but I actually play with it an awful lot. You obviously have to collect a bunch of different things from crystals to frogs to fossils, breed five frogs, send five items to geological council, complete a collection and collect 25 collectibles. Actually very, very simple. However, is a pretty good reward trait, easy to do if you're just going out and collecting things. I think the reason I use this so much is obviously because I love a good rags to riches. This one is gonna go pretty much against everything that I have said, but most people would probably put this in like Grim Reaper. I'm gonna put it in Rosebud. I never said, I wasn't a hypocrite. Find treasures, activate a mystical relic five times, open three rare treasure chests. Basically, again, another walkthrough of like exploring the jungle. Definitely not the most interesting or out there. So pretty bang average, I would say. Ooh, the caretaker one from Cottage Living. Cows. I don't even like the royal family. And yet I only think of that when I see a cow. Hello, man, this is a long one. Purchase a 
one cow chicken or llama. Socialize with a fox, rabbit or bird five times. I like how it gives you choice. I like not feeling constrained. You have to visit all the different neighborhoods. That's quite fun. They really said, we released this in lockdown. We need your Sims to get out of the house for your sanity. Fertilize three plants, give gifts. Cottage living really pulled out all the stops with that one. You're going straight into Rosebud. Outdoor enthusiast, one of the first non-base game aspirations that we got. Eat 10 plants, achieve level four of herbalism. When was the last time you played with herbalism? Let me know. Sleep for five nights in a tent and collect 15 insects. Okay, these ones aren't super difficult. I think you're probably gonna do a lot of that if you are playing Granite Falls, but it feels better than a lot of these. Like at least it has some variety to it. Purveyor of potions. I love the word purveyor, can I just say? Become a spellcaster, standard. <laughs> Learn a potion recipe. Own a cauldron, know three different potions, rank three. Pretty bog standard, pretty simple crumple bottom. Oh, freelance botanist. I also have an awful lot of these. This is really where like my play style and the kind of sims that I like to create definitely starts having an effect. Fertilize five plants, evolve 10 excellent plants, grow a cloud plant. I do wish that this was like magnificent. I wish that this was like the pinnacle, which excellent actually isn't. And I wish it was like 20 magnificent ones. I wish that this was a challenge. So even though I use it a lot, I definitely don't think it's like as challenging as I personally would like it to be average. I will say for freelance botanists, that's a really weird reward trait. They're like, hey, you're good at growing plants. Here you go. You don't touch fire. What was the reason? Why do we not have plant sims? You know what? Grim Reaper for that. I'm moving you down. You had your chance to redeem yourself and you didn't disgusting. I never use party animal. Earn silver on three social events. Do you know that the higher you actually place in social events, your charisma skill actually goes up? So if you get a gold, you actually fly through the early levels of your charisma skill. I only noticed that the other day. I've been playing this game for 10 years. Throw 10 social events, attend 15 social events. You know what? I never get invited to Sims parties. That would be so much easier if townies actually rang you and were like, hey, I'm having a birthday party or, hey, do you wanna come to this party? But they don't. How are you meant to attend 15 social events? You're gonna have to throw every single one of those and earn gold on two throne parties. That's very, very easy. Come off it now. I feel like earning silver on three is actually more difficult because it means that you have to like stop on silver and like keep yourself there. Bog standard, not really too much of a party animal, are you? <gasps> good vampire, love of my life. Absolutely love a good vampire. Don't drink deeply for five days in a row. The reason I like this is it's actually quite difficult because your thirst as a good vampire goes down really, really quickly. You have to gain permission to drink from two different sims, which again, gaining that permission is actually quite difficult unless you've befriended them and have built up quite like a healthy relationship. Don't drink without permission for 14 days in a row. She is top tier. No wonder she's a good vampire. She is an angel who could do no wrong. Do you see that hate? Halo above their head will always be my favorite. Musical genius, definitely uh, brought down by the fact that the music career just isn't fun in The Sims 4. I'll be the one to say it. They know an arsenal of songs that have significant power over others. I don't think I've done this in a really long time. Musical genius used to be my favorite like base game aspiration. I would put it on almost like every sim that I played. Do you know actually if the glitch is fixed where songs take forever to write? 75 hours playing musical instruments meant to others in music for three hours and reach level 10. But I definitely don't think there's anything wrong with this. So uh, Rosebud, achieve level five charisma skill, even if your club has nothing to do with it. I guess that's what makes you a leader. Talk about clubs with five club members, earn a thousand club points and lead a club with eight sims. Attempting to take over always succeeds, can't be overthrown and will also earn club points whilst in a gathering much faster. That's pretty OP. I don't think you do anything wrong, but I also also don't think you're like as interesting as what I have up here. So uh, crumple bottom. I personally actually don't like when aspirations 
need you to join like a career and like reach level 10 of the career. This one actually doesn't say you need to reach level 10, which it goes up in my estimations for that. You just have to reach where you can obviously choose between which branch you wanna go to and perform three comedy routines. So a lot of this you can do outside of work. I just think the work ones, I'm like, sometimes I wanna be like, you know, an eco innovator, but I don't wanna be in that job. Like if you get me, Rosebud for you, friend or of the world. I'm fairly sure this is just about like keeping and making friends. I did this one recently and it was so uh, simple. Introduce yourself to uh, 10 Sims, have three friends, have 20 friends, make a BFF, achieve level 10 of the charisma skill. If you get further and further up into your charisma skill and you do like charming introductions or like the other introduction that means that even when you introduce yourself, you like befriend people. It's so uh, simple. Everyone remembers a beloved Sim, their relationships never fade. That's kind of cool. Maybe it's just because I know that my social battery would definitely run out, but I think friend of the world is boring. Use an amenity in a shared space, host a neighborhood potluck or pool party event, successfully break a unit rule, become good friends with property owner. They're better at negotiating rent forgiveness, getting along with neighbors, won't have their belongings repossessed by their property owner and host better events. Oh, sorry. I just dozed off reading that. Not interesting, not fun. Neighborhood confidant, this was one of the base game ones, which is just like a one step. Successfully advise and influence the lives of other Sims. I'm fairly sure that is to do with like neighborhood stories. I mean, those are very, very simple. Considering Sims call you every single day for you to influence their lives, they may be able to easily avoid boring conversations, but it's making me bored reading this. Sorry, you're joining the deep depths of hell of tragic clown. Can we just quickly talk about how my towny version of Judith Ward really looks like Lucinda from Married at First Sight Australia. It's all I can think about. I genuinely think this is gonna be mother load. I absolutely feckin' love Get Famous. I know, another unpopular opinion. I am filled with unpopular opinions when it comes to my favorite packs and I own that. Even the first step, like becoming a two-star celebrity is difficult. Receive 25 positive responses from inciting cheers and sign three autographs. My personal bias is gonna come back and she's going into mother load. The journey to two ones, I do not remember these. So I'm literally gonna read these from Sims community. A big thank you to Jovan and the team for this one. The way that these work is you only have two actually within Create a Sim. And then once you do like the introductory one, it then splits off. So it's kind of difficult to remember what they are. This one is a galactic privateer. Swindle two Sims, complete five missions for the scoundrels. Rank five is definitely gonna be the hardest one to do here, um, but definitely not the most interesting. These are basically all just walkthroughs of this pack. Hope versus order, which is basically the introduction. Visit every neighborhood, ask about resistance or first order presence and complete a mission for the resistance or first order. No, I hate the introductionary ones. I just don't think they're necessary. The Paragon of Hope, this obviously is with the resistance. Explore Caves of Batu, complete two missions for the resistance, recruit three Sims. They're all going low, I don't care. You need to hustle, gain self-care notoriety, become a spa regular and maintain a regular customer. Oh, you need to make 5,000 from wellness related activities. Have a regular client and give them 10 wellness paid services. You know what? I don't remember these, but that is fun. That is difficult. Yes, you are in Rosebud where you belong. Find peace by reading wellness books. Mm, 40 times. They said we're only giving you one step ones, but we're gonna make them repeatable. Maybe I need to play through all of these as well. I really judged the like smaller ones. I don't think this one is quite as interesting. So it's going into crumple bottom. You need to perform wellness socials or comforting socials on 20 Sims. Share a detox tea. You need to achieve level 10 to even be able to make that. This again, I don't feel is quite as interesting in this one. So that's also, no, wait, I think that one's more interesting interesting than in a piece. So that's going in uh, Rosebud. Nifty Knitting, another self-proclaimed one of my favorite packs for The Sims. Knit on a rocking chair, knit for five hours. Teach another Sim to knit, complete five legendary. But it's definitely not the best aspiration. I don't really know what else they could have done with this though. So it's gonna go into average. Oh, this 
introductory fucking werewolf one. Again, I don't remember these, so I'm gonna read them from Sims community. For the werewolf initiate, you need to become a werewolf, level up to run, experience a full moon, and read three werewolf books. Very, very easy. Again, it's just an introduction, so it's not, I don't feel as bad as the Batu one, but it's going into Grim Reaper. Then this is obviously to do with the uh, collective. Join the Moonwood Collective, socialize with werewolf friends four times, and become alpha. That's the one that's going to take the longest, but definitely not the most interesting. Then obviously we have the Wildfangs Renegade. Turn Sims into werewolves three times over and become alpha of the Wildfangs. Now this one, way better. Honestly, I feel like turning werewolves just adds that little bit of drama that I personally really like. And then Lone Wolf, level up to Apex, unleash the beast 25 times, which is going to happen so frequently as a werewolf, spar with werewolves five times and defeat Greg. That's going to take you the longest because defeating Greg is quite difficult. This one I feel is better than the Moonwood one. And then Cure Seeker, harvest moon petals three times, wolf spain ten times, craft the wolf begone and drink the cure. Ugh. I always think this one is to do with hoovering because doesn't this just look like a hoover? But it is Master Maker. It came with Eco Lifestyle. I have learned all the tricks necessary to fabricate items at a reduced cost. Recycle five times, level three in fabrication, make 20 candles, complete five gigs at a free as a freelance crafter. See, I uh, like this one because it has those different like variations of things that you can do. I feel like it explores quite a bit of the pack, but also makes it feel as if your sim is like constantly doing different things, which I like in a lifetime aspiration. May not be this for everyone, but it is a rosebud for me. Earn gold in a commercial, give a street performance, earn gold in a TV show, receive an award. Kind of like how that's just like random. Obviously, if you are a celebrity, you do have like a pretty high chance of this happening at some point, but you could be waiting a little while. Although uh, the reward tree isn't that fun. Like it just means that they'll never fail. Where is the fun in that? It's not enough to push it up to a rosebud, but I do like that you have to place the tile. I don't know why that's not in a world renowned celebrity. Painter Extraordinaire, another base game one that I heavily relied on when I only had a base game. <laughs> it's all about the painting skill. I know, surprising. Sell three paintings to collectors or art galleries, complete three emotional paintings, complete five masterpieces. Super easy to do this one. However, they can create highly emotional works of art regardless of their actual mood. I think that also goes for food. So you know how you, like if you're in a playful mood, you can make the gummy bear pancakes. And if you're in an energized mood, you can make like the high protein plates, so on, so forth. I think if you do Painter Extraordinaire, you can make those dishes as well as like creating any emotional piece of art that you want. It's a nice reward, but I don't really use that like emotional sway stuff really that much anymore in my game. So you're also average. Grilled cheese aspiration. I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to read it. It's a secret aspiration. You have to eat three grilled cheeses back to back in a very short time period. You have to summon the Grim Reaper, which obviously if you have crystal creations now, it can be easy to do with Jet. However, before that, you had to kill a Sim for this aspiration. You have to kill for your love of grilled cheese. Honestly, for that reason, the fact it's a secret, mother load. She's shrouded in mystery and I love that for her. I very much feel as if none of the children ones are gonna be anywhere close to the top. I don't think any of them are gonna be above average. Reach level 10 creativity, draw all five picture types. Why are there only five picture types and yet there are 20,000 different types of painting tables? Play instruments for a total of five hours. I would if you gave me interesting instruments for children. Average. Join your big sister. Ooh, the ones that came with growing together though. Creative genius is play pretend in a treehouse. creativity level three, creativity level six. I like how they get you to work on two skills in these ones. Sleep in a treehouse for six hours. I mean, extremely easy, um, but I do like the mix up. Maybe I take the last one back. Maybe you go in Grim Reaper and then these guys go in Crumple Bottom. Mind and body, become confident, achieve level three and mental, learn to ride a bike. Good luck because it's still glitched out. Achieve level three in motor skill. Go 12 hours without a negative need moodlet. That one, 
probably pretty hard. I honestly think that one's a little bit more interesting. So you're going in Rosebud, congratulations to you. Stomp playfully on splash pad, uh, become friends with three other children, ride a bike for four hours, which obviously you need to learn to ride a bike to be able to do that. Sorry, you are also a crumple bottom. Where did you go? Honestly, I wish I could put the score up just because it features the word rambunctious, which I love. Play on a jungle gym whilst playful, uh, motor level two, practice typing for four hours, make it across monkey bar three times, earn high score on the typing game and achieve level 10. Your average slumber party animal, attend a slumber party at three in social skill, three in creativity, exchange a friendship bracelet, tell three stories, achieve gold. Very, very easy. You're going in Grim Reaper, I think. Social butterfly, make a BFF, five new friends, level five, level 10 in social skill, become friends with two adults, become friends with three other children. Too easy. Honestly, I think also probably the least interesting kids one that we have. They do build adult skills faster, like when you complete these. Homework two times whilst focused, achieve A at school, three emotional potions and level 10. I just find the kid ones too easy. From what I remember, these were quite fun. We're gonna do Drama Llama first. Gossip five times, spread a rumor, mess around in the cuddle carts. Be mean on social bunny three times, break up with the sim, have an enemy rival. Mm, love the drama, hate that that one is so uh, simple. Can leave relationships rocky, uh, nothing says carefree like moving on and letting go. So does that mean that they can just like break up with someone and not feel anything for it? I'm confused as to even what that reward trait is. Honestly, you are, for a drama llama, you've not got much drama to you. Goal oriented, level three of a side hustle, attend a career day, earn and keep an A, Level three on after school activity and 500 simoleons. I like this one. This one I think is really fun. I think it has a good mix of things that you can do. I think my issue with these is the fact that teenagers still aren't that great to me. Like they don't feel like their own separate life state, even with the introduction of high school years. But that one I actually do think is fun. Like it lives up to what like an overachiever, like goal orientated person is. Live fast, die young. Get in trouble, sneak out to a party, ask a sim on a date five times, start a fight, summon an urban myth twice. I just love the urban myth. I think that one you can do quite easily just if you're living life as a teenager. And then admired icon, post on the social bunny five times, make 10 teen friends, list five outfits on trendy, earn gold on any hosted party, have 250. Well, I don't have any followers on my social bunny right now because that has been broken for me for the longest time my followers just do not go up. I know I probably shouldn't judge it on that, but I also don't think that's the most interesting. So it's joining Drama Llama. There we go. That is my full tier ranking of aspirations. I know this video was probably so long. I genuinely did not realize I had so many thoughts on aspirations. Gonna take a screenshot of that, probably gonna post it on Twitter so that I can get everyone's opinions. Let me know how you feel about all of these aspirations down below. I will also link this tier list. So if you wanna take part, if you wanna send them to me over on Twitter, over on my Discord, feel free to do so after you have ranked them. Honestly, it's really hard to rank these things without like your personal biasness and like how you play the game actually affecting it. But I think that's the fun. I think everyone plays the game so differently and like we all have our favorite things about this game and our least favorite. It's the same with packs, aspirations, traits. I'm not surprised that my average category is the biggest category, but definitely let me know how you feel about all of this in the comments below. Thank you all so much for being here. If there's anything else you would like to see me at tier rank when it comes to The Sims, definitely let me know. I absolutely love making these types of videos. I love just spilling all my thoughts out to you. I hope this one was enjoyable and I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now. <laughs>